A couple of months ago, you might have seen a video I made about the black lighter overlay system for the Vectrex games machine. These overlays add an ultraviolet illuminated pattern alongside a splash of colour to the early 1980s monochrome vector based games console. But that video I put out back then, that was really only supposed to be the second half of a longer video. The first half was supposed to be me installing a buzz off kit. This kit is supposed to eradicate the irritating background buzz that's present on most Vectrex models. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Vectrex buzz, just have a listen to this. Unfortunately though, back then I ran into a bit of an issue that resulted in the buzz off kit installation part being put to one side, but now finally I can complete it. The reasons for this will all become apparent during the rest of this video. So without any further blathering, let's get on with it. Hopefully you can hear from that why you'd want to get rid of that sound. So let's see what's in this kit. First off, I think we should open this bag because we can see we've got instructions in here. Okay, so this is part two. This is the volume rejuvenate kit and that will be to get rid of the oxidization, the crackling on the volume. Let me just demonstrate that to you. So clearly that needs doing, but we'll get to that part later. Let's have a look at the rest of it first. Okay, it looks like this is quite an operation. We've got instructions here with nice printed images on them. This one comes with a couple of wires at the top, but this is just an addendum for rare models with a soldered sound chip without a socket. More than likely you can discard this. I'm not going to throw it away yet. I'm just going to put it to one side. And then we've got a nice clear image. For what purpose, I don't yet know until I've read the instructions, but there's a wire taped to it here and a couple of wires taped to it there. So that'll no doubt come in handy once I've read this. Now the instruction manual itself, again lots of nice clean images, a lot of pages, but simply laid out, which I do appreciate. And at the beginning of this, it suggests that I watch the... Um, insulation videos that are on YouTube. And let's just have a look what's inside this box. We've got some alcohol prep pads, a fireball suite, a silica gel packet, sticky back pads, and the main event, the Vectrex Buzz Off Wafer version 3. Connector on the front here, couple of wires on the side, sticky back pads on the back, and that's it. So it doesn't look too complicated, the complicated part though is taking the Vectrex apart and then putting it back together again. So let's get on with that. Get rid of the buzzing that's been a prominent problem for many years. The GCE ones from the early... Right, so I've watched the video. That makes a lot more sense now. So the reason there's wires on here is just to show you where the wires go. You don't use these wires. They're just examples. The blue one goes to that point, the white to there, the orange to there. And those are the wires off this device here blue, white and orange, this turns out to be um, an amplifier. This is the amplifier. So this is your speaker connection here. So in the Vectrex before, it has an amplifier that's somewhere in a position where it gets interference. This moves the amplifier somewhere else and the wire that would have got off to the amplifier goes into here and then the wire comes out of here into the speaker. So that's ba the basic idea behind it. So first thing is to get the screws out of here and then the whole board comes out once I've disconnected a few things. A little bit scary because after all this is a very precious thing to me. If this gets damaged I'd be upset but uh, I think I've got the information I need to be able to do it correctly so let's get on with it. Wow, just look at the dust in there. Let me get a torch on that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I suppose I shouldn't expect anything less, but flipping out, that needs a good, uh, a good clean, doesn't it? Okay, now the next thing we have to do, we have to get this whole board to come out of here. And there's a number of screws holding it to the front. So those are the next ones I need to undo. All the screws are a slightly different length to one another. So far, I'll need to be careful when I take these out, make sure I remember which one goes where. Now I'm wondering whether or not I've picked the right Vectrex to do here, because I do own two, and I can see the chip there. I don't know if you can see the one I've got the light on. 
that is soldered in it's not in a socket and that means I have to do the thing that's on this list here so it looks like I've got a rare model but never mind we'll we'll get on with this one at least I've got a backup I suppose so the next thing I've got to do is to take out the screws that are holding this board to the front of the case so I'll get on with that now Right, I've changed my mind. I'm going to do this on the other Vectrex. One of the things is you're supposed to unplug this cable here. This should be an unpluggable cable, at least in the instructions it is, and in the version that was shown in the video it was. In this one those are soldered in. Which means that I couldn't get the board out properly because there's just not enough slack there. It doesn't move out far enough to be able to get to the points I need to solder. So I've got two Vectrex. They both buzz. I've got one buzz-off kit. I might as well just put it in the other one. I'll just give this a bit of a blowout with some compressed air and put the cover back on. I've got to say, I think there's a very good chance I'm going to damage this messing around like this, so I'm just putting the cover back on again. Okay, so we're not getting rid of the buzz on this one today. I've put the case back on. One thing I have managed to fix, though, there's no more crackle on the volume pot. I sprayed a bit of deoxid into there and it's uh, fixed it up, no problem. So at least it's better than it was before, but as far as the buzz goes, that still remains. We'll fix that on the other Vectrex. Fingers crossed that one has got socketed wires on it. Otherwise, it looks like I'll be doing a bit of desoldering. Okay, Vectrex repair take two. I've got two machines. This is the one that I keep in my storage locker, at least I was doing. I um, I thought I'd put the rubbish one in there and the good one was the one I got in the house, but maybe I've got them mixed up. This one's got quite a nice bright logo on. I think the other one's a bit more faded. So maybe I'd swap them over by mistake. One of them stopped working at one point, which is why I got the other one. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago now. And then the other one just started working again and carried on working and has done ever since. So I don't know if this is the unreliable one or not, but uh, I'm gonna plug it in, see if it works. And then hopefully we'll be able to get a look inside and see if this one's a bit easier to take apart than the other one. Right, I can hear it's coming on. It's got the buzz, which, which is what we want to get rid of. It's got the problem with the pots, which we need to clean, as you can hear. But it is working. Let's take the back off this one and see if it's going to be any easier to install my D-Buzz kit, which I found earlier on and put to one side. There it is. So yeah, it's taken me ages to get back to my locker again because uh, of this Covid business. I didn't want to visit it until it seemed a more appropriate time. I went there with my gloves on and my mask and antibacterial wipes and everything, press the button to get in, clean my hands, all that kind of stuff that you have to do nowadays. And um, hopefully, oh, unplug it there, hopefully it was all worthwhile. So let's have a look. Yeah, so we've got the sockets on here. This is what we wanted on the last one and didn't have. So that enables me to take those out and slide the board this way. And then I'll be able to get access to the part of the front that I need to solder some wires to. Now, when I do pull this chassis back, there'll be nothing to support it, so I've got to be careful not to break the yoke on the CRT. So, I'll just be careful with this. Obviously, I know everyone's going to say, oh, you put your hands very near massive voltages, you could die, etc. If you're unsure of your abilities with things, I'd recommend not doing this. There we go. Take that one out, be careful not to drop it. Okay, so this chassis should, there we go, come out. Now, one thing I forgot, the power button. I need to pull the power button off at the front. The volume button should, should just pull off. There we go. Right. So this should now slide out. I'd like to think that was true, but something is holding it. 
One thing I do not need to take off is this cable here. There we go, so that just pops off. Just makes things a little bit easier. One less wire. That's for the uh, original amplifier, I believe. I'll have to unclip these cables here. Hey, you know what's holding it? It's this thing here. All right, so now it should all slide out. Yeah, there we go. Brilliant. Just got enough slack to play with. Just about. Okay, so here's the new amplifier. We've got three wires that we need to solder onto the board. I soldered the ground to the left one, which is the blue, the green to the middle. This is the sound chip. And below there, there are two holes there. I just need to solder the other wire here, and that should be it. Okay, it's a bit of a tight fit in here. The wires are pre-tinned, but uh, it's quite awkward to see what I'm doing. I think I'm going to have to come at this from a different angle. Yeah, those old solder joints really didn't want to melt, but they did in the end, once I put a bit more solder on, got it all sorted out, got everything nice and firmly attached, and then realised I'd made a mistake. I hadn't been keeping my eye on where the wires were, and I'd put them either side of this loom on the left, which means I can't get the amplifier back over to the right again. So rather than re-soldering anything and risk damaging the circuit board, I just snipped the wire and then joined it back together again. Okay, so I suffered a small yet significant cock-up, hence the join on the wire. Look, um, I'm not good at stuff like this, but hopefully it doesn't really matter. That's just a 5 volt power supply, I've soldered it back together again. So this should now go on top of here, like that. And then to that we attach the speaker wire, which currently is going from the speaker down here, all the way up here. It's this curly one, it should just pull off with any luck. There we go. So that speaker wire now attaches to this. Don't suppose it matters which way round either. Like that. Knock it up. Okay, now while we've got it out, we can clean the potentiometer. I've got some deoxit here, and we just need to spray that into the hole at the bottom. And then manipulate the switch, and that should clear all the crackles. At least that's the idea. We'll find out when we switch it back on again. Okay, now this wire that comes from the top that originally went into that socket, we don't need to use that now, so I'll just tape it up inside, I think. All right, and now we can put it back together again. Apparently this earth connector is not required anymore, but I'm soldering it back up again because I think it's better than having it floating around loose. Right, before I put the case back on, I just want to see if I've broken it or not, so I'll put my volume control back on on off switch as well and uh, we'll just plug it in see what it does right here goes nothing right so there we go so we've got the amplifier thing imaging here going off to the speaker the sound is coming into that from the inputs at the front, and the 5 volt is from that wire down there. So what we've done, we've bypassed the audio section up here, which was too near all this stuff and got lots of interference off the transformer or whatever. And we've moved it out of the way, and it's um, not picking up anything now. Well, other than the sound it should be picking up. Yeah, it's not the tidiest job, is it? Look, there's a wire hanging here. What am I supposed to do with that? Maybe I should take that somewhere. Um, I'd cocked up the wiring a little bit had to redo some of it but yeah look I'm no expert but I've managed to get it done so it shows that it is possible even if you're a bit of a clown now since I've got both machines in the house now I thought it's a good opportunity to do a bit of a demonstration of before and after so here's the one that hasn't been done <laughs> Now it's important to understand that there aren't supposed to be any sounds at the moment. This is with the volume turned all the way down. So let's have a listen to the other machine with the buzz off kit installed. Yeah, there's nothing to hear except an eerie silence. So let's turn the volume up and play the game for a moment. Hmm. 
So I'd call that a success. Now, of course, I'd understand that there are people out there who would think that a Vectrex without its trademark buzz is missing something. And I'd say to those people, well, don't install a buzz off kit. It's a very easy thing to avoid doing. But to someone like me that's only ever seen and heard of Vectrex all the way back to the early 1980s with its annoying to me buzz, it's very nice that I've now got the option to have a buzzy machine or a quiet one. Now, if you feel confident enough to install one of these yourself, the seller's name on eBay is Obtanium Gaming. I'll put a link to him in the video description. There was only one there for sale when I looked, which no doubt will have sold out pretty soon. But you can always send him a message if you want him to make some more. Now, before I go, I just want to show you this light pen that has been sent to me the other week. This comes from Rastislav. He saw the previous video I did about the Vectrex. And he said he wanted to make one of these for me, which is very nice of him. Now, back in the early 1980s, the light pen was an official accessory for the Vectrex. I don't think they sold too many of them, but this new version is a big improvement in a couple of important ways, especially for people using it nowadays. The first one is the original one didn't have any buttons on the pen itself. You had to use the buttons on a joystick that was plugged into the second port. But with this version, you've got the four buttons on the light pen itself. That means you'd no longer have to use a second joystick port for your joystick. And in fact, you can plug your joystick into this as a pass through. And the reason for that is because most people now will be playing games from a multi cart and to be able to move through the menus and select the cartridge you want, you want to use a joystick in the port where the light pen is plugged in. So this enables you to use both the light pen and the joystick effectively in the same port so you can choose the game you want as well as control it all from the light pen itself. As long as, of course, it's a light pen application. I'm using Artmaster here. And I'll be honest, it's a long time since I've used a light pen. I think it was perhaps the early 80s, maybe 84. I had one on the Spectrum briefly. And then when I started working, they had light pens plugged into all the dumb terminals, the IBMs, which uh, I think were to select things on the screen, client records and stuff, but people didn't tend to use that. They just ended up using cursor keys or typing numbers in. But yeah, I remember every computer having a light pen on it back in the day. It really shows my age that, but just look how smooth this is. I mean, it's really quite impressive to me still nowadays, but just think you could have done all this back in 1983. You would have bought your Vectrex, you could have got this cartridge, you could have got your light pen and done all this in your house back then. And what other home computers or games consoles could have done anything that approached this level of fluidity or resolution? I think it would be years before anything came along that could match this. But there you go. I thought you might be interested in seeing that. It was a very generous gift. and I thought it was an interesting thing to show as well. Now, if you do want to get hold of one of these light pens, I'm not sure whether he's selling them at the moment, but I'll put a link to Rastislav's eBay page and maybe you can send him a message if you really want one. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.